For thousands of years, mankind was unable to recognize the color blue due to it appearing so rarely in nature. On the grasslands of the savanna, the plains of Europe, and the steppes of Asia, the color blue appears extremely infrequently amongst natural fauna or wildlife. And because we evolved to identify edible plants and animals, our brains ignored the color blue in the few places it did appear. For an untold amount of time, humans were simply oblivious to the color blue, and ancient writers such as the Greek even referred to the ocean as wine-tinted purple rather than the beautiful blue of the Mediterranean Sea. This inability to see blue still occurs in a few isolated African tribes that live on the savanna, and when shown the color blue on a color wheel, they are completely unable to identify it since their brains don't have the idea of blue wired in, yet they are able to identify dozens of different shades of yellow that we ourselves are blind to. It's a crazy mixed up world of color out there, and while seeing or not seeing blue is fine and dandy, what about eating it? Once more we turn to your favorite experimental guinea pig, which after the dozens of comments we are forced to publicly state is a term of endearment. Just don't tell him that. If he feels more important to the show, he's going to start demanding higher pay. Now stay tuned as we challenge him to eat only blue foods for 72 hours because our brainstormers were really bored, I mean for scientific reasons. Day 1 well, this should make for interesting poop, was the very first thing that popped into my head upon reading my next assignment from the infographic show. The very next thought was, where the hell do I buy blue food? What blue foods even exist? I guess it's a good thing they provided a healthy shopping stipend for this episode. I did some research online and it turns out that there are some naturally occurring blue food items, though definitely not very many. Blueberries immediately spring to mind and it's a good thing I happen to like blueberries because I'm going to be eating a lot of them. There's also apparently a fish called the lingcod that's naturally blue, though it can be hard to find. Shouldn't be an issue for a city as big as Los Angeles though to score one of these fish. Although I am not looking forward to it because outside of survival challenges I really don't like eating fish at all. It's all, well, fishy. I believe it was the great and underrated comedian Jim Gaffigan who joked, how can you tell when a fish has gone bad? It smells like fish! I did find a ton of recipes to just turn your food blue but that sounds like cheating so I won't be doing that. From my research though, it does kind of look like I'm going to be pretty restricted to what I can actually eat. There's blue potatoes, which apparently have an earthier taste than regular potatoes. I guess people don't like their potatoes looking kind of gross blue and so they're not very popular, but they do exist. Then there's also blue carrots, which by the way is the color all carrots used to be until the Dutch decided to grow only orange carrots in support of William of Orange, and the new look just kind of stuck. Yes, we did do an episode on this, why carrots are orange, because we do episodes on everything, including including apparently eating only blue foods. There's also blue corn which was popular with Native Americans until betraying and killing Native Americans became itself popular with the Europeans. You are still able to find blue corn though, because mankind loves novelty enough to keep certain species from going extinct. Sorry rhinos, we love money more than you. There are also bilberries, which I feel is sort of cheating but is apparently a European cousin of the blueberry. Luckily once more I'm in a major city so finding them shouldn't be a problem. Concord grapes are apparently considered blue, although to me they look more purple, but you know what? If they're going to increase my food variety, I'll take it because right now it's looking like fish and blueberries for three days straight. And um, honestly that's kind of it. At least foods that wouldn't require being flown in from the most remote parts of the world. These things are so niche, like a certain kind of mushroom that grows in only a certain part of Japan that they cost an arm and a leg. If I presented an expense report for a crate of those things to infographics, I'm pretty sure someone there would have an immediate heart attack. Ok, well it's time to go shopping, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Day 2 Alright, so I said that I would stay away from food dyes, but I never said that I wouldn't eat foods that had been pre-dyed. After all, I could simply buy some food dye and marinate a big juicy T-bone steak in it. Also, sorry it turns out there's like so few naturally blue foods that all I would end up eating really is fish and berries, and I'm not a grizzly bear putting on fat for the winter, I need variety. So I went shopping yesterday and I should call it hunting more than shopping. I had to cover at least half of the city to find blue potatoes, bilberries, blue carrots, and lingcod. Which by the way I was unable to find filleted and actually had to buy a whole fish. Try and imagine how well that went down with a girlfriend when she came home and found a 20 pound 3 foot long fish sitting on the counter. Oh and fish guts were everywhere because I had been trying to fillet the damn thing for 15 minutes before she got there. Also apparently not all lingcod actually have blue flesh, but I got lucky and mine had, well not truly blue flesh but I guess it's more blue greenish. Their guts are about as red as any other fishes though and the girlfriend made me swear 
there to disinfect the entire kitchen when I was done. Also, we are temporarily not on speaking terms because I chased her out of the house with a handful of fish guts. So fish has been on the menu, which I prepared alongside of some blue carrots. Honestly, the fish tastes like fish, and other than being a bit earthier and maybe tangier than normal carrots, the blue carrots tasted exactly like normal carrots. What an earth-shattering discovery! Glad Infographics insisted on confusing my digestive system for three days with this silly challenge. I did have a helping of pudding that happened to be colored blue. Listen, I know that milk, eggs, and, well, to be honest, I don't know what goes into making pudding, but I know these things aren't naturally blue. But like I said, it's not my fault that nobody at the show specified I had to eat naturally blue foods only. Also, fish is terrible and pudding makes me happy, which is a feeling I need after eating blue-green fish for two days. The color doesn't help with the smell, and the idea that you can't really tell when the fish has gone bad, but when you cook the flesh, the color goes away and it's just normal white. That's kind of disappointing to be honest, I thought it'd at least be fun to eat blue fish flesh. I guess I could make it into sashimi, but literally every blog and website I found on the matter said do not risk this. The lingcod is apparently not a great fish for sushi or sashimi because of parasites. Parasites, which I realized were simply being cooked to death and then I would eat. Extra protein, I guess, but yet another reason to never eat fish if you can help it. Day 3 It is really, really hard to eat only blue foods. I mean, you can find plenty of artificially colored blue junk foods in the supermarket, but if you don't want to gain 30 pounds overnight, which I don't, then trying to eat even remotely normal and eat only blue foods is a hell of a task. I couldn't stomach fish anymore, so instead I switched to potatoes, carrots, bilberries, and blueberries. The blueberries and bilberries I made into a jam by smooshing them, adding some sugar and corn syrup and letting it sit overnight. In the morning it made for a pretty delicious breakfast, and even the girlfriend enjoyed it until I told her that I also put blue fish in it. She looked very much like she was going to vomit on the spot until I told her I was only joking. But given the very weird nature of my challenges, I'm not sure she believed me completely. She's thus decreed that from now on, whenever I'm doing a quote, stupid challenge, end quote, our food is going to be strictly segregated. The bilberries taste more tart to me than blueberries, and they are definitely not my favorite. Probably explains why they're not as popular as their blueberry cousins. Can't say they were very noticeable on their own when made into the jam though, but if you eat them individually you can definitely taste it. For lunch I made myself a giant heaping serving of blue french fries. Now if you're a fan of our challenge series, then you know that I'm myself a huge fan of french fries, but to be honest, blue french fries are just gross. They taste completely normal, but you can't get it out of your head as you're eating them how unnatural they seem. I guess we associate the color blue with colors of rot and decay. It's the color of a rotting corpse after all, and so it can be hard to swallow blue foods that aren't things like berries. Even the oven baked blue carrots I had for dinner alongside more stupid blue fish were hard to eat. It turns out that the color really does affect our appetite and our feelings about what we eat, which is why I guess we prefer brightly colored food items. They just seem healthier to our brain because they don't have the same colors that rotting food does, and trying to swallow a bunch of blue fries down without thinking about them being rotten and disgusting is pretty difficult. I honestly think that this is the only observation I have from this whole three day experiment, along with the fact that I don't think I want to touch fish again for a few months because out of all the food across the earth, fish really is just the worst, unless it's made into sushi. And that's weird, right? I'd rather eat raw fish rather than cooked fish, which I find disgusting. Welcome to my topsy-turvy life. So should you only eat blue foods? Definitely not. The diet is pretty restrictive and you're mostly going to be left with boring old fish, like two vegetables and two types of fruit. I guess if you went ahead and cheated with blue colored food that's man-made, you might be able to get away with it for a while. Then you can include all kinds of pudding, yogurt, and jello into the mix along with various types of cake. Although fair warning, blue colored cakes are typically gross. Not that cake itself is gross because it's just colored bread really, but for some reason blue colored cakes are always topped with weird things like fruits or jelly beans. The biggest risk from eating blue only foods though is the lack of nutritionary variety. If you're a subscriber to our show, and really why wouldn't you be, then you probably saw our episode on the British kid who lost his eyesight from eating nothing but junk food. Go check it out, it's called Teen is Blinded by Junk Food. 
Whether you saw it then or are going to watch it now, you'll know or are about to find out that overly restrictive diets can seriously harm you over a long course of time. Limiting yourself to only blue foods will eventually starve your body of much needed nutrients and minerals, and much like our British kid in the junk food episode, you can suffer serious harm to include loss of vision and even deafness. So I'm going to go back to my normal life of eating a rainbow of regular foods, though I'll have to work through the 4 12 packs of blue pudding I bought because I desperately needed something other than fish and fruit. As you might have learned by now watching these challenge episodes, impulse control is not my strong point. If you had to eat one color for three days, which color would you pick? Tell us in the comments. Then go watch why carrots are orange and learn why carrots aren't blue anymore. Also, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more great content.